Hello, welcome to Cami Designs, and today we're going to go over the heel turn on the sock we're working on. Now it looks like a lot. We're going to do four rows, and then we're going to re repeat the three and four until we get done. Now I'm going to go over the whole thing with you because it does get a little complicated. When I first did a sock, I was really confused, really lost. <laughs> and so this is what the heel flap looks like, which is the back of the sock. Here is what I've done. So that is here. So now we're going to work on this part of the sock. Now we are going to be working just back and forth. And where it gets confusing is you don't knit all of the stitches at once. You go back and forth. Now this was a slip one, knit one. And pearl so it's a little wavy and I don't want that on the bottom of my sock so I'm just going to just slip the first one and then knit or a pearl so and I have just done a just did a video on a slip slip knit and a pearl two together and they're only a couple minutes long so if you want to just watch a video on those Go ahead and check them out but first we're going to start here and we're on the right side so we're on the knit side and then this is the wrong side it's all the pearls and it's also the inside of the sock so i want to slip one and i want to do it pearl wise and then i'm just going to knit 18. one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I gotta move this. I keep hitting it. So that's at nine, right? Let's see. One, two, three, four, eight, nine. Yep. 11, 12, 13, oops, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Now, it did not go all the way to the end, as you can see, but now I want to slip stitch or slip to knit wise and then knit those together. And how I do that is slip one and then two. And then I want to knit these two together through the back loop. And there is my SSK. Now it says to knit one. And now I turn. I'm not going to work these stitches until later. So now I turn my work here. And I want to go on to row two. So row two is you slip one. And then purl seven. So one. Two, three, four, this would be five, six, I think it's six, let's see, that's a slip, so one, two, three, four, five, six, so one more. Seven. Now I want to purl two together. So that is just going to be going through these next two stitches, purl wise, at the same time. And I'm going to purl it like I would purl this one. Okay, and now my pattern says to purl one. So just purl one. 
and to turn my work. So now I'm going to turn it again. And once again, I did not work these stitches there. They're just going to hang out on my needle until I'm ready for them. Now I'm going to go into row three. So I'm going to slip one. I'm going to knit to the first stitch before the gap. So slip one. And then I want to knit to the first or the gap. And you can see in this, you can see the color change. But you can tell that this is a gap here. That's the gap they're talking about. So I'm going to knit to that up to that one. So I'm not going to count these. I'm just going to knit them. Okay, here. Slowly getting there. Okay. Now, I knit two. There's one stitch left before the gap, which is this one here. And now I want to do the slip, slip, knit. So what I do is I then slip, slip it, this one, knit-wise, here. I'm going to slip this one knit-wise, and then I'm going to knit through the back loop of them just like this and then I'm going to knit one so see I'm slowly um I'm slowly working these other stitches here now I'm going to turn my work once again and I'm going to do row four so I'm going to slip one purlwise and then I'm going to purl to the before the gap and once again you can see the gap here by the color change but also you can see where it's kind of spaced out there right there okay so I'm gonna purl to one before just like I did on the knit side but this side is going to be purl some yarn here my knitting's a little tight and this is red heart super saver papaya color it is worse weighted um, I really like the colors. I have another pattern I use with this color called, um, Lollipop Swirl. It's a cowl, a knit cowl I did. It's on my Ravel Ravelry store. Okay, one more purl. Okay, now I've purled till there's one stitch left before the gap. Now I want to purl two together. So just like I did before, but I'm going to go through this one here so I'm actually picking up one of my other stitches purl through the two just like that and then it says to purl one okay and now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to go back to row three which is right there so row three and I'm just going to keep repeating this until all my stitches are worked and I'll have 20 stitches total. And then I'll knit one more row and then ready to do the gusset, which will be another video. So I'm going to slip one knit wise, just like that. Or sorry, no, not slip one knit wise. I just want to slip one, so I want to keep it purl wise. Then knit to the one before the gap. Okay, here. And you'll start to notice that it does start to bump out. But that's because it's doing the heel turn. Okay. Just 
couple more stitches here. And now I'm at the one before the gap. And I want to slip this one knitwise. Slip this one knitwise. And then knit through the back two loops of that, of those two together. And then knit one. And then I'm going to turn my work like that and slip one. And then I'm going to purl to my gap. And the reason I'm showing this whole step. Um, I normally would just end the video and tell you to just repeat until the end, but I know when I was working the sock, um, I could have really, when I first did socks, I could have really used the video just showing the whole step. So I wasn't getting confused or lost or any of that. Now, you can, before you do start this heel turn, if you're worried about possibly messing up and having to take out or having to put it down and not remember where you're at, um, you can do what I do and is put a piece of thread through. So if you can see here, there's a piece of dark blue thread through that row. So if I needed to frog it or rip it out, I could rip it down and stop there. Um, when I did my first sock, I put one into a knit row of this on the heel flap, just so then I could rip it down just to there. But, let's see. Now I'm purled one before this. Back to the pattern, sorry. So I've got one here, so I'm going to purl two together. Okay. Pearl together and then pearl one. And you can see we're slowly using up these stitches on the side here. And then we turn and I'm going to go back to my row three. So I want to slip one pearl wise. And then I'm going to knit to the gap. And this is when you start to really see the heel shape taking place. And especially if you did a different design on the heel flap, the heel turn will really stand out. And I'm knitting a little fast here. My husband would say, slow down, I can't see it. <laughs> um, but I just want to get to the next gap here. Okay. Now, I got the one before the gap. And I want to do the SSK. So, slip it knitwise. And knitwise. And I want to go through the back two loops. There we go. And now knit one. And then I'm going to turn and do the burl side. Now I slip one and then I'm going to purl to the gap. There we go. And you'll see that I'm getting more and more stitches the farther into the heel turn because I'm picking up those other stitches. Okay. 
right here. Okay, some more yarn here. Okay. Now, I'm at the one before the gap. I want to purl two together. So, go into these two stitches purl wise. Yarn around. Purl up a stitch. Now, purl one. And turn my work. And you can see my little heel is coming along. And now I'm going to slip one for a wise and then knit. I'm a lot faster at knitting than pearl. I'm just going to knit down to the gap. Just like this. Okay. One more. And now I want to do the SSK. So slip this one knit wise. Slip knit wise. And then I'm going to knit them together to the back. Then I want to knit one. You can see I've only got a couple stitches left there. So I've only got a couple more rows to go. And then I slip on the purl side. Slip one purl wise. And then Purl through these. Oh no, I dropped some stitches. That is something we don't want to happen. Uh oh, I don't want to lose them. So I'm going to get my little thing here. Pull it up a little bit. And slip my needle back onto it. Because I need to redo that one. Okay. And it looks like... There we go. Now we got all the... Oh, not quite got all the yarn on there. Maybe we do. Okay, so I want to purl that one and not pull my needle out. Okay. See, and if I were to do that, slip my stitches off by accident like that, um, which I don't, that doesn't look right, so I, I might have to go back and fix that. So, let's just do that now. I'll pause the video, go back and fix it, and then we'll come back. <laughs> okay, I'm back to the beginning. I fixed it. I just had some of this yarn not through the loop all the way. So now I'm going to purl these, like I did before, just not lose them. If I didn't go back and correct it, um, it would have bothered me for a while. <laughs> but um, if for some reason I dropped a stitch and didn't, and didn't realize it, my yarn project could come unraveled. And then I'd end up ripping it down to my cord that I don't want to if I don't have to. Okay, these stitches are a little tight here. I think that's what my problem was before. There we go. So 
but I'm just going to slow down and take my time. If that happens, you know, that's what I recommend, just kind of slowing down a little bit. You don't want to, you'd better just slow down than have to redo the whole thing. Okay, I'm slowly getting there again. I know this video is a little longer than my normal videos. But like I said before, I'd rather show you the whole process. So if you want to follow along, or if you need that longer explanation. Okay, now purled one to before the gap. I'm going to purl these two together. Just like I would purl one stitch and then purl one. Okay. Now I'm going to turn my work and I have two on this end and two on this end. So this might be my last row of each. So I'm going to slip one purl wise. Then I'm going to knit until the gap and you'll notice that um, I kind of hold my stitches and push my needle through Okay, feel the gap coming out. Yep. So now I'm going to SSK the next two stitches. So slip knit wise, slip knit wise. And then slide my needle back through them and knit them together. I'm going to knit this one. And now all those stitches are used on that side. I'm going to turn it and go to the other side now. I'm going to do the row, last row four. So I'm going to slip this one purl wise. And then I'm going to go ahead and purl these. This should be the last row for purl, and then I just have to knit across, and then I'll be ready for the gusset, which will be the next video in this series. And this one, the heel flap, the heel turn, and the gusset are what kept me from doing socks for a while. I didn't go through the right thing here. Oh, because I have some stitches on here that don't... Some yarn here that doesn't belong here. There we go. Now these, like as, as I was saying, the heel turn, the heel flap, and the gusset all kept me from doing socks for a while because it was a little intimidating. But as you can see, once you know how to do it, it's not as bad as it seems. Okay. I gotta get some more yarn here. Okay. We're almost there. I promise. This video is a little longer than 
I would like, but I just want to show it to you. Okay, so this is one before the gap. It's kind of hard to tell with this one, but you can kind of see that there's a bigger gap than through that one. So now I want to purl two together. So go through this one and that one. And bring up my stitch and then purl one. And so I've used all my, I've worked all my stitches and now I just have to knit them all. So I will just do that real fast and then we'll be done with this video. And the only reason you are purling or you're knitting a row because you want to start on this side when you go around the sock. 